You can't live without me. No! Think. In Love Couple, Petra and James spend time together at dawn. Then responsible Petra quickly gets ready and rushes to classes. They're classmates with James, but the guy doesn't do so well in his studies and often arrives late for classes. Today, their philosophy class is the last one before college ends. The students don't yet suspect how cunning and beyond academics the exercise that their professor has prepared for them is. The young professor named Eric Simmet doesn't want to let James into the classroom. He also has a lot of issues with the guy overall. However, James convinces him, takes his seat, and the lesson begins. So for you, there's a chance to clear a path through the muck of the world and see ahead to the deep truth of things. To start, Zimmet asks the students to recall their favorite thought experiments. A guy named Chips recalls the experiment with a monkey. The idea is that after spending an unlimited amount of time at a typewriter, a monkey will eventually type out Hamlet's text. Jack remembers the scenario where a person controls a tram using a lever. On one track, there are five tied up people, and on the other, there's one person. If you switch the lever, the tram will harm only one person. It's more logical to sacrifice one person, but to Petra, the experiment seems cruel either way. Don't be fooled by the arithmetic. It's murder, either way. The girl doesn't yet realize that this experiment isn't as frightening as what awaits them ahead. Next, the guys recall an experiment where a person is about to fall from the tallest tower and calls for help from friends. But they're afraid to lend a hand to the unfortunate person, fearing they might fall themselves. The person falls, miraculously survives, but can no longer trust their friends. Was it worth testing their friends and losing them, or is it sometimes better to remain in ignorance? Share your thoughts in the comments. Professor Zimmet presents another experiment to the students, one in which they all can participate and showcase their qualities to prepare for their future. Let's envision a global cataclysm, in the event of which, how do you survive? Zimmet presents a scenario involving an imminent atomic apocalypse. In this scenario, a group of 21 individuals, including a professor, is faced with the challenge of surviving in a bunker for a year. However, the bunker is only equipped to accommodate 10 people, and its oxygen supplies are limited. If the group exceeds this limit by even a single person, everyone's oxygen supply would be insufficient, leading to suffocation. Which means you have to decide who's valuable enough to expend limited resources on. The guys are horrified by Zimit's idea. Petra wants to leave altogether to avoid participating in such a ruthless idea. Zimit threatens to lower James' academic score if she leaves. The professor claims he's willing to do anything to work with the best students. It sounds harsh, but Petra agrees to stay. The experiment begins. Each student picks a profession card from Zimit's box. Interestingly, after James and Petra draw their cards, Zimit pretends to cough and steps aside. Zimit is clearly hiding something from them, but they don't suspect it yet. Consequently, the students get various professions, from harpist to astronaut. One of them draws a poet card. Zimit immediately eliminates this guy as a representative of a profession useless for survival. That doesn't mean you had to kill him. Was it any crueler than letting an atomic cloud peel his skin off? What do you think? Is a creative profession useless in an apocalypse scenario? The professor's cruelty seems unjustified to the students, but Zimit insists that everything must happen as in real life since it's about humanity's survival. The professor keeps his professions secret from the students, but hints that it's very important for the greater good. Then each of the students tries to convince the others that they deserve a spot among the chosen ten. Some of them resemble Zimit and rather harshly accuse their peers of being useless. James is an organic farmer and Petra is an engineer. In the end, only a builder, an electrician, a psychotherapist, and other people with survival skills will make it into the bunker. The students also agree to include Zimit, rejecting the opera singer. Five minutes before going down into the bunker, the students suddenly hear a series of gunshots. It's Zimit dealing with everyone who didn't get a spot in the shelter. They didn't want to face the agony of death by radiation. Petra is horrified by such cruelty. She doesn't want to see Zimit in the bunker. The group shuts the door right in front of the professor's face. He remains outside, at the mercy of radiation. The friends explore the well-equipped bunker and go to sleep. In the middle of the night, Petra is tormented by guilt. She goes to see Zimit, who's been poisoned by radiation. With his last strength, the professor shows her a note that only he knows the exit code for the bunker. Petra gathers the whole group at the door while Zimit passes away. Some of the group members think that Zimit is bluffing and there's no exit code. However, they can only test this after a year. 
Until then, the friends have to agonize in doubt. They suspect that Zimit was really important for them, and they won't be able to get out without him. A year passes, which can't be called a happy one for the group. On the appointed day, the group tries to leave the bunker, and they realize that the code is necessary. Without the exit code, there was no getting out. The friends try every possible way to open the door, but it doesn't yield. Because their dislike for Zimit clouded their judgment, the bunker became their prison forever. The friends finish the last of their food supplies and using their weapons, end their suffering. Then the air in the bunker runs out, and even the strongest can't survive. From their imagination, the students return to the classroom. Everyone feels uneasy about the lost scenario. Finally, Zimit reveals his profession. He's the creator of the bunker. He suggests the students play again. But we still have a bunker, and we still have an apocalypse. This time they have to face a volcanic eruption. Secretly from everyone, Zimit runs into the bunker and grabs a weapon to manipulate the students if necessary. Then he asks the students to flip their profession cards and read another characteristic. According to the new conditions, James turns out to be gay. This isn't ideal for survival during the apocalypse, as humanity needs to continue reproducing in heterosexual pairs. Nevertheless, they accept James among the chosen, as he's a farmer and physiologically capable of fathering a child. On the other side of the surgeon girl's car, it's written that she might be an Ebola virus carrier. The students can't risk it, as she could infect the whole group, leading to humanity's demise. They also let Zimit in so that they can exit the shelter after a year. Those who weren't accepted in the bunker try to escape however they can. I intend to outrun these blasts. I have room for passengers. It's up to you. They get into a car and want to leave, but the volcanic blast wave catches up to them faster. Meanwhile, the chosen ones rush back into the bunker and spend the first night there. Petra can't sleep. Walking around the bunker, she finds James fooling around with a guy. According to the scenario, James is gay and it's natural for him, but Petra still gets upset. The students gather in the common room to discuss the issue of procreation. James suggests that survival won't depend on childbearing, but rather on the evolution of a different kind. For now, the group doesn't understand what he means, but perhaps this idea will help them survive in the future. In the meantime, they pair up to conceive. Petra and Zimit are supposed to be the first. Ten weeks pass in the bunker, and the girls aren't getting pregnant. Stress is probably to blame. Zimit knows how to increase the chances of successful conception. We need to start a new program. Multiple partners for the girls. Bonnie, a soldier with eidetic memory, finds this idea immoral and won't allow Zimit near her. The professor leaves somewhere and soon returns with a gun. He kicks all the students out of the room and threatens Bonnie. Zimit demands that she set aside personal feelings and desires, and instead, use logic for procreation, but she refuses to comply. One of the guys attacks Zimit, wrests the gun from him, and a fight ensues. When the professor loses control, the guy injures him with a pencil to the ear. Enraged, Zimit heads towards the bunker exit. Fire is visible everywhere behind the glass door. It's definitely not safe to leave the shelter, but Zimit doesn't care. He enters the exit code. Flames burst into the bunker, and everyone passes away. No! The game is lost again. Sitting in the classroom, some of the students suggest playing again. But before that, James wants to figure out an important detail. He remembers how Zimit coughed at the beginning of the lesson when he brought the box with cards to him and Petra. James suspects that there's something fishy about the box. He abruptly grabs it and discovers a false bottom. It turns out that Zimit deliberately arranged things so that James and Petra would draw prearranged cards. The students don't know the reason for fixing cards, but James is convinced that Zimit is trying to humiliate him. I can tell you're lying to me. I just don't know what about. To understand what the professor is after, James asks for a useless profession for survival. In the new round, he will be a florist. Will James be among the chosen this time? Now the bunker is on an uninhabited tropical island. The group arrives here, and Zimit immediately runs to the bunker for weapons. Then he casually relaxes on the pier. Petra joins him and hugs him in a show of support. She understands that Zimit is struggling with some internal conflict which is why he's so aggressive. Nevertheless, Petra stands her ground and wants to change the rules of the game. She wants to personally decide who gets into the bunker. She promises that her decisions will be fair. Zimit doesn't dare to defy her. According to Petra's decision, a wine auctioneer with a crate of red and white wine is now among the chosen. Petra's next choice is a fashionable designer, as beautiful clothing boosts self-esteem and could help rebuild civilization. Petra, this is disordered. But Petra continues. She selects a poet, 
an autistic carpist, a doctor suspected of having Ebola, a singer with throat cancer, a gay couple, a pair of good guys, an ice cream vendor, and James the Forest. Zimit doesn't understand Petra's choices at all and criticizes her. He claims that everyone in the bunker is useless. He tries to force the group out of the shelter, threatening them with a weapon. However, earlier, using a hug as a distraction, Petra stole the gun from Zimit. Moreover, during the previous exit from the bunker, Bonnie with her phenomenal memory memorized the exit code and shares it with the group without any manipulation. Now the professor has no power over the students, they don't need him anymore. As a parting gift, Petra gives him the gun with two bullets, so that he doesn't have to suffer for too long. When Zimit leaves, Petra hesitates to enter the bunker. She left the last spot for someone else and chooses a guy who's sterile. My logic's fuzzier. In my apocalypse, everybody's worth as much as everybody else. Chips, who made it into the bunker, hands Petra the keys to the boat to search for uncontaminated islands, but then pushes her into the bunker, taking her place. Those who remain outside get into the boat and sail to seek salvation. The friends spend a wonderful year in the bunker. They play cards, drink fine wine, perform Shakespeare plays, listen to the poet's verses, dance and spend time in love, not out of necessity to continue the species. They even gather a heart for the autistic carpist. Now, along with the opera singer, they regularly delight their friends with beautiful performances. Before sleep, the group prays, thanking God for their salvation and asking to save those who are still outside the bunker. After a year, the group successfully exit the bunker and discover a remarkable thing. The bombs never fell. We're okay. But Zimit thinks that the kids won't survive anyway, as they won't be able to return to the mainland, build new homes, plant vegetables, or do anything necessary to be able to live. Petra disagrees with him. Of course, the group's life on the island won't last long, so they didn't even try to fight for survival. They were simply happy. When the time comes to say goodbye to life, a nuclear missile lands on the island but doesn't explode. James prepares to activate it. The others are ready to sacrifice themselves for James. Zimit threatens James with a gun, with just one bullet left. But everyone else lines up in front of James, ready to sacrifice themselves for their friend. Zimit lowers the gun, James activates the warhead, and the island disappears from the face of the earth, along with all its inhabitants. The smartest one in this story turns out to be Chips who at the last moment gives up his place in the bunker to Petra. While everyone was sitting in the shelter, Chips, along with six girls, found another uninhabited island without radiation. From then on, the guy's life was in paradise. I had a girl for each night of the week, and on the seventh night, I rested. And even though according to the rules of the game Chips is sterile, he decided to make as many attempts as possible and believed that success is possible. Everyone except Zimit is thrilled with Chips. That concludes the last philosophy lesson. The students turn in their textbooks and leave the classroom. Petra remains behind. She reproaches Zimit for the cruel game and his undermining attitude towards James. It turns out that Petra and Zimit were in a relationship. They broke up. But the young professor can't let go of the girl and is very jealous of her new boyfriend, who he thinks is below her. Petra asks him to leave her alone. It's painful for Zimit to hear, but Petra softens her tone, and the former couple tries to accept each other's choices. After a painful conversation for Zimit, Petra kisses him goodbye. Soon she'll be leaving for a university in another country. Left alone, Zimit goes to his office. There's a pistol hidden in his desk drawer. He looks at it, then a shot is heard. At the last second, Zimit remembers Petra's face. Similar to the earlier scenarios proposed by Zimit in the film, this particular scene is depicted with multiple outcomes, illustrating the various hypothetical results from the previous experiments. This was the movie After the Dark. For me, the movie was captivating, with unexpected twists and very profound. I'll definitely re-watch it multiple times to catch all the details. And what do you think about this movie and the necessity of surviving at any cost during an apocalypse? Could you sacrifice emotions and humanity for the sake of survival? Let's discuss it in the comments.